to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. Welcome to a special episode of Pit Lane Parlay. We're going to call this first episode the Lost Tracks Edition. We're going to start with my home track in Nazareth Speedway, and I am joined by one of the guys from the Save Nazareth uh, group here with Tim Silliman. Tim, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you reaching out to me. Yeah, Mike. no problem. Uh, you know, so for those who may not be familiar, Nazareth is located uh, near me, about an hour and fifteen minutes north. And uh, Tim, take us through the founding and you know the the real old school of uh, what, what was then called Nazareth National Speedway. All right. Um, so uh, I'm not sure how many people actually know. Um, there was actually a horse track closer in like middle of town back in the 1850s. So this is, so it was like your old style, you know, of a horse, you know, like I think it was like a mile or so, or maybe, or maybe it was a half mile. Um, but it was around like 1900 or so they moved out of town to where the site of where the track is right now. And they built a half mile track. And that's currently like where the giant and, and all those stores are right on 191 and 248. Um, so they didn't actually start um, auto races until about like 1910 or so. And those were like, those like motor polo. I don't know if you've, you know, if you've seen some of those uh, screenshots where they were yeah. like on like old, like <laughs> tractors, I guess, if you will. And it was like water polo or like a horse, you know, like the, that, uh, what you're used to seeing but with a polo stick and you're driving around in a car and you're smacking balls around. So that didn't last very long, but it's, it's very interesting to note that that was actually a thing. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I'm just reading my notes here. Uh, Wikipedia calls it auto polo. Uh, and it, it actually drew a crowd of at the time, which I guess is pretty big and you know, 10,000, 11,000 people, which is pretty substantial for, kind of a rural area in northeastern Pennsylvania. Yeah, so um going a bit further down, um the uh first like large race was hosted after World War II. Uh, it was hosted by AAA if um I'm not sure like a lot of the younger people, uh, of course I'm saying younger, I'm not that old either, but I'm sure there's a lot of folks that probably don't know about AAA and you know the things that they used to do like that back then. And then, and for for then a large race was about thirty something cars or so, and and they crammed that in with eleven thousand people or so. So that was a pretty big event back then. Um, so a second track was built in 1966. So that was the larger uh, one mile. Uh, dirt was actually one one eighth. It was an odd uh, length, but not a lot of people probably know that there was actually two dirt tracks. There was a larger um, oval, and then there was a smaller half mile. Uh, so that was built in '66, and which is the current iteration, or like like the current like the current the exact location of that track. Um, <clears throat> so like during the uh, during the uh, 1960s, that's when uh, the bigger track hosted like USAC events and whatnot. And it was actually, I think it was in 66 that um, Al Unser beat out Mario. So like like the big, big, uh, big time hero, you know, was beaten out by somebody that's not from the area. So I'm sure that was a, f- f- a fun thing to watch. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, everybody associates the track with the Andretti's, obviously, since they well now you know pretty much all live down the street or or nearby. But uh, Al Unser is actually the guy who won the first USAC race there. Yeah, and you had like big names, you know, like Al and like like a uh, I think it was like was that David Rudiman's dad? Yeah, B- Buzzy, Buzzy Rudiman. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, like like you had those old school names that like not a lot of people think about because they just go, oh, it's Nazareth, so it's got to be Andretti, right? Um, but yeah, the large um, oval c- c- closed down. I think it was around 1971, but the smaller track stayed open that hosted your weekly dirt night stuff. So like you're like your modifieds and your like your legends sort of stuff. So that went on on while that track was closed and it wasn't until 1982 where the where the both tracks were purchased by a local businessman uh Lindy Vicardi I'm not sure if a lot of people know that name but that was like a local uh PA guy um that he was a track promoter and whatnot so he he bought both tracks but sadly, with running both tracks, that gets quite expensive. So in 87, uh, I believe it was 87, that, that was purchased by Penske. And then the large oval was paved over, well, it was actually slightly shortened and then paved over. And then the small dirt oval was sold to Lane Co., which for those people that don't know about Lane Co., it was an old grocery store chain. For us millennials, you may or may not be old enough to know about that but um so so like after that was paved you had uh like uh, the uh, b- uh nascar uh bush series and the trucks and then you had uh will and modifieds and they had cart um obviously so that all ran pretty much up until it closed in 2004 and then you know the track was then sold off as penske was getting out of the track game which they own which he owned michigan and auto club and so like like he was starting to get out of that and he was starting to sell those off so he actually sold that to isc which is your your international speedway corporation love them or hate them um that's up to you i suppose <laughs> so you know as like the big expansion was happening with nascar you know you, you had these bigger co- corporations buying up tracks and what they would do, they would, they would go, well, there's a market somewhere else. So as opposed to having somebody else own it and compete, we'll just buy it and then close it. So, so you had that happen to like a tracks all over across the U S. So they actually moved the Nazareth date to Watkins Glen. And I'm sure there's some people that may not know, but those stands on the front stretch are actually the stands that, I used to sit in when it was here. So it's kind of like kind of frustrating when you go to the Glen and like those stands don't belong here. (laughs) Um, So so that's kind of like the general rundown of like what transpired. So, you know, there's those big tracks like Indianapolis that, you know, that's been open since what, like 1914 or whatever. So so like there's there's yeah, so there's always been a track here, whether it was in town or the smaller dirt oval or the larger one. Like there's there's always been something there, and it's kind of you know it's kind of sad to see it when you know I was born in '91, so like that's that's where my dad took me. I lived up the street, so I could hear it. Like I was not even like a mile away. So whenever cart was there, I'd go outside. I'm like. Michael's here. Michael's here. You know, I was all excited and, you know, but we don't have that anymore, sadly. So. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, people on on the show have heard me say a bunch of times I used to run around the grandstands while my dad was still working for cart, but it was such a a cool facility. Uh, Some of my notes that I'm going to share with, with everybody here, the track when it was paved was actually, uh, well, it was advertised as a 1.125 uh, mile track again, just like the uh, uh, dirt track. Uh, I'm sorry, a one mile uh, paved track, but the actual measurement was uh, less than a mile. So teams figured out how to uh, really get a good fuel strategy there. And once it was uh, officially measured, it was actually 0.9 miles. So you know, not really, a, you know, not quite a mile, although it's essentially the same thing. And uh, the IRL in the last one, two, three years of the track uh, used a measurement of 0.935 for timing and scoring, although NASCAR kept it as you know one mile until 2004. Uh, and I do always laugh. I don't 
particularly, you know, as everybody knows, pay close attention to NASCAR. But when you see Watkins Glen, you see those stands, you go, oh, those look really familiar. I remember before I, the first time they were up there, the grandstands were there. I, I, uh, you feel a little sad because you know, Nazareth was the first place I saw any sort of uh, racing. And, you know, it was one of the first tracks in the you know, Northeastern area. Another track that I'll cover in the coming weeks is Trenton Speedway, which is also, you know, an oh, early. Yeah. 19, very, very unique. Very, very unique and very early 1900s track uh, is another one. So it's kind of a forgotten area by both the. Uh, open wheel and NASCAR standards in today's world. But obviously we have Richmond coming back next year, which is great. Um, let's look at some of the winners here. It's pretty cool. Uh, Danny Sullivan actually won an IROC race here. Uh, as you mentioned, Al Unser won the first uh, USAC race here. Mario Andretti won the second USAC race here. So, so, so something to note was the old Marlboro challenge you used to run run there back was like the late eighties. I think it was like the big, like it was basically the, the all-star race, but cart. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, those were, those were fun races to watch. Uh, if you can find them online they're they're definitely good. Uh, let me ask, let me ask you a, a question here. I'm going to, this is typically something I do to my, my co-hosts, but let me see if you can, uh, Guess it here. The only person to win the cart race here in back-to-back years uh, would be what driver? It would be 1989 and 1990. Uh, man, um, I don't. I don't want to say no. For some reason, I was going to say. Little Al, but that's I feel like that's not right. Yeah, you would be incorrect on that one. Uh I honestly wouldn't 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 know to be honest. So <laughs> I <yeah>. feel bad. <laughs> no, it's it's all good. Um I appreciate all your insight on the on the early years of the track here. I know uh, I didn't tell you that this would be going on beforehand, but it it's actually Emerson Fittipaldi who at eighty nine oh. won it with Patrick Racing and ninety won it with Penske. Uh, Nigel Mansell won here. Paul Tracy won there uh, twice uh, at Nazareth, and then uh, the late great Dan Weldon won the final race here in 2004. Uh, let's see. I know some, some interesting notes. The 2000 race was actually, I believe, the week after the Indy 500 because it was postponed due to snow. Yes, yes, I remember that year. I was supposed to go and I think what was that like in, in April and like April. <laughs> the whole track, the whole track was covered in snow and I didn't end up being able to go because then my mom went and I remember that story. She was like, yeah, yeah, we went and then Michael crashed or whatever. And then like, for she described it as like, crashing in flames or something I, I wasn't actually there so i don't actually know how the crash happened but i was like oh man you know just had the snow in april <laughs> yeah that that would uh that would be very common for the for the northeast uh for those who aren't from the northeast uh like tim and i it snows really weird times here uh throughout the year but some other notables uh again another unfortunate late and great driver greg moore won in the cart in delights days, uh, the buddy rice won in the cart Atlantic championship, Cristiano Damata. Let's see here. Robbie Buell, everybody's favorite Mike Groff won <laughs> twice here at cart <laughs> in delights. I think Matt will get a kick out of that one. Cause I brought up his name a couple weeks ago. Uh, and I believe correct me if I'm wrong here, but this was Scott Dixon's first win in 2001 or was his second ever I want to say it was his first because I remember on Facebook when they were when any car was doing like I don't know if it was specific to Scott or if it was to like in like in, as general events throughout history, but they streamed that race on Facebook yep. Live, and I'm pretty sure it was his first win. Yeah, back then it was uh, Pack West Racing. 
Um, Matt's favorite driver, uh, Elio Castroneves, won there in 2003, the second to last year. And uh, see Bobby Rahal, another semi well, East Coast ish favorite, won in 1992. Let's see who won. Um, Michael Andretti won the year I was born. That's that's. Uh, 1987 for those keeping track at home. Um, <laughs> let's see here. What else we have? We had some, we never had NASCAR. I don't know, whatever it is. Monster energy cup, cup series, whatever it was back yeah. then. But we had the Bush series and some of the, the truck series. Yeah. Uh, the, the, there was a no, uh, I think it was Kenny Wallace. I don't want to throw him under the bus, but I, I remember there was a race. I think it was him. And he was there and he was complaining about it being five turns. Yeah, it does sound for it does sound familiar. I don't know either. Uh it probably was Kenny Wallace because he says a lot of ridiculous things. Uh but I don't I don't recall. Um and if you follow uh Marco Andretti, you saw a more recent picture of Nazareth, which is kind of depressing, but um, I will find that and put it on our social media for uh, when we release the episode here. Uh, but the track looks like it's probably never going to come back. But I'll uh, we'll we'll end our short, you know, lost track seg first lost track segment with Tim. What do you know about a what's currently going on there, and b how can people help out the save Nazareth speedway group. All right. So here's, here's the lowdown. Let's see back in September of 2018. It's been actually just been over a year. I started a petition and just as, as a disclaimer, I never really um, believed that I was actually going to do anything. Yeah, I've gotten some flack online from like IndyCar Reddit and stuff. They're like, oh, just because you make a petition, does that mean it's going to, you know, <laughs> actually happen? I'm like, it, it, it was always meant as a focal point of people's voices to go, hey, this, you know, we all believe in this thing. So I started this petition first, not as a means to bring the race like track back to life and being, bring r- racing because I, I always felt, not like to be like morbid, but I didn't really think it was going to come back. So first I made this up by myself and I wanted to have iRacing scan the track. Like if something was going to, if something good was going to come out of this, I wanted to at least have it virtually saved for as long as there's the internet that somebody could, could at least enjoy it and run a virtual car and at least kind of feel you know, the ups and the downs and like five turns, like that doesn't really happen on an oval right now. Um, so that kind of like took off like the first few months, um, maybe like a few thousand people signed, um, a, a good per- personal friend of mine bought a, uh, a, uh, a copy of the deed, uh, to like read through it, just to understand all of the ins and outs. And I, I still have a co- a co- co- copy of it. And the clause is like, so in depth of like, you can't do anything that's related to like motorcycles, anything that has an engine in it. Like it, it, it could even be go-karts. Like they won't let anybody run a go-kart as long as there isn't a ticket to spectate a go-kart. Like, it it goes as deep as saying that you can't sell racing memorabilia. Like you can't sell video games that have racing on that property. Like they didn't want anyone to do a damn thing with it, like nothing. So that was always like the big hurdle. So like when, uh, uh, when the current owner bought the track, you know, for, for understand people were calling him on the phone. They're like with all these ideas, like, Hey, let's do this. Hey, let's do that. And I called him on the phone and I was like, Hey, I started this petition and got a few thousand people signed it. Like, I know nothing's really going to happen, but I wanted to bring this to your attention. And I, and I felt like there was some sort of confusion, maybe, I don't know, not, not to say being older does that, but being uh, of the computer age, I wasn't quite sure there was a disconnect of being like, I want the races game on a video game or races track on a video game. 
can we scan it? And he kind of took it as like, oh, we're going to have to clear it and maintain it. Like, I'm not going to spend the money for that. That's going to be like $500,000. And I was like, I just want like like a volunteer group or something just to kind of do what Dale Jr. is doing. Just go with a lawnmower and like some wee whackers or whatever. Like, of course, it's going to be a bit more intensive than that. But, you know, just to get it fresh enough to where, you know, go in there, do we need to do and just let it go. Um, so like throughout that year, you know, I contacted Steve Myers and I kind of feel bad, you know, about Steve Myers. Cause you know, he's the guy that, you know, is kind of like the face of iRacing basically. And I've probably hit a chord because throughout the times that me or somebody else around me or just somebody else has spammed him about scan Nazareth, scan Nazareth. And at this point he's like, don't even talk to me about it. Like I've already looked into it. Can't do it. Don't care. Whatever the case. So, you know, it's kind of, kind of, um, kind of upsetting, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, so like through 2019, I kind of let it go for a bit cause I was getting burnt out. Like I was the only person calling all these people, calling the owner. And I'm like, I can't do this by right. myself. So I just let it go for a bit. And then out of nowhere, like February or so people started contacting me and, I, and they're like, Hey, are you that person that made that petition? Or, and I was like, yeah, what's up? And like, yeah, I feel strongly about this cause. I want to join you. Well, you'll know, get all these things going. Da, 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 da. And I was like, sure. Great. I mean, it was hard enough doing it by myself. I mean, sure. So we went through all the, you know, uh, rounds, you know, we reached out to Mario Andretti's business manager we had some back and forth with him on that. Um, you know, some people of the Andretti families, you know, reached out to the page and saw us posting and started to like message us. And, and basically out of that front, it just kind of gave the impression that they felt like the community abandoned the track in some way because they were noting about Pocono and like, Oh, you know, if the fans don't support Pocono and it seemed to strike some chord of if people didn't go to Nazareth, you know, like people certainly did go. So I don't know. I quite understand the disconnect of, of where that support may have not been or may have been there, but that was sort of the feeling from some of the members. I'm not going to disclose any sort of names because I feel that's a little, you know, imp- not not good, but you know, it's a scene sure, kind of like sure. that. Sort of like a woe is me, like you know, the, like like where were you people then? So sort of a thing. And I always stress, I'm like, I'm in my 20s. Like, I was a teenager when that track closed. So people like my age that are kind of like rallying around me, and you know, sort of are all like born in the late, like either the late 80s or early 90s, and like we were children, like. It would have been our parents to stand up and, you know, do that then. Now it's kind of like our turn. So, like, you know, we reached out to them and we spoke to different people in the community. And we, as far as we got was, we 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 reached out to, I think it was the American, like, Motorsports Association or, like, the United States Motorsports Association, I think is what it was. And basically what they're like a nonprofit and they, they work with owners that want to like do something r- r- racing. Um, that they want to do something related to, um, racing, whether it's like they own a track and they want to bring something back or they want to build something and they kind of do like a, a cost, um, uh, like they like inspect the market around them and see like, okay, it'll take this much to build or this much to repair or whatever, and then come up with a plan and go, okay, uh, here you go. This is how much it will cost. This is how much you projected to make. So I got as far as reaching out to a source to where if the current owner really wanted to know how much it would cost, which I'm sure he probably did because, you know, he bought it. So I'm sure it, he as a business planner and you know a business owner would do i'm sure he already did that but that was certainly a resources to use if if i could like point them together and go you know hey guys talk like he could have reached out to them and and they could have come out and then inspected the area and go you know cost you know this much money to repave and you know rebuild whatever 
but that's kind of like the ball's in his court. So that's far me. So that's kind of where we are. Um, the only really, really new thing was that, which I find interesting that there's been a few articles that like Mario, you know, he went to the track and uh, somebody coaxed him out and then they walked around and it, it, it wasn't a name drop, but he did kind of hint at like, you know, Hey guys, like this is, this is gone. Like, why are you still doing this? Like support the tracks that are still open, which Yes, I, I agree. So, so, you know, supportive tracks are still open, but you can also, you, you can do both. Like you can still want to bring back something that you care about. Also at the same time as make sure things that are still alive, stay alive. Like I never quite understood this notion of let it like lay, let, let you know, let laying law of uh, uh, dogs lie, you know? So, but especially with Pocono being off the schedule and, you know, and all that, it just seems, which I don't necessarily blame the community. Like I, I've been to four out of the, how many races that came back and there was plenty of people there. I mean, it's, it's not like a NASCAR pack field, but I mean, in terms of any car, like there's, there were still plenty of people there. So I'm not quite sure if just, just if it's like a Northeast thing or, you know, or whatever. But um, the, the final thing I'll note is that, the current thing that might be the think about is that since ISC was bought out by NASCAR and there was that merger, it, it, it might be interesting to find somebody in the NASCAR community, maybe be like um, Dale Jr. or something to where he has a voice with them that you could make the point that now the legal ties that bind that property are now with NASCAR as opposed to ISC because now because they merged because NASCAR bought them. So if you really wanted to go to NASCAR now and be like, hi, you know, maybe Dale Jr. wants to bring back North Wilkesboro, scan for iRacing, whatever. Like there seems to be some sort of grassroots movement that that might be the only hope now is going to NASCAR. Like, you know, the fans are complaining about there's not enough short tracks, you know, we want, you know, want more of unique ovals. Cause it's, you know, it's a mile and a half. So we're starting to get boring. Like there's something to be said. We just need a voice attached to it. So we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I love it, man. I will put the link to the uh, public Facebook group and our iTunes show notes here. And along with some pictures and stuff I will put on, on our social media, but uh, thank you very much for joining us in our, uh, you know, first recording of, you know, a, a lost track type, type segment. Uh, we'll be doing plenty of these throughout the off season to keep everybody entertained and bring you guys some, some new content. Tim, thanks for joining me. Uh, this evening. I look forward to uh, seeing how everything progresses. Thank you. I appreciate you inviting me out. It was, I'm always happy to, to, to talk about my home track and anything that can help do something with it. I'm all in for. Cool. Well, have a great night, man. I appreciate your help. Thank you. You as well.